the Triple Trio with Hutchie, Richo and RS Die. It's Hong Kong Racing with the blinkers off. Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new edition of the Triple Trio, your weekly look at all things Hong Kong racing. We do it with the best form analyst in the business and Clint Hutchison and the Hall of Fame jockey in Shane Dye Hutchbuster. Brilliant to see you, mate. Great to be here as well, Rich And What a week we've had at racing in Hong Kong, and we're building up, I suppose, over the next week to, well, it's Hong Kong Derby next week, so we're pretty much finalised. We'll cover that in the show, and it's yeah, it's been an interesting week. A small loss on our strategies, but pretty happy all over with the form. We've um, we've been sort of a little bit unlucky, I feel, in a couple of results, but one of the better results was Champion Dragon. Loved this from Matty Chadwick. Uh, yeah, We're going to chat to Matt uh, a little bit later as our special guest, but he's absolutely flying and this horse was out in front. Um, steady enough first half and skipped away to win uh, quite nice. A deserved win for him. And we had a nice result during the week, of course, uh, with Kowloon East Star as well. Similar sort of role. Up in front, rolling along, and uh, he proved too good. So uh, a couple of nice results. A couple that probably didn't go our way, but um, happy enough with the way things are going. Shane, I love to see a, a jockey in really good form, and uh, Matty uh, Chadwick certainly is. We've got a nice result there. Welcome. Hi, how are you, boys? Uh, I'm well. Uh, what did I do on uh, Wednesday night? I lost a little on Wednesday night, actually, and I lost a little last Saturday, so it wasn't too good the week. Oh, plus oh. I've got to say I made a big mistake last week, Richo. What would you do? Which mm -hmm. I normally do not do. I'm pretty good with facts and figures. I actually said Golden 60 had broken nine times 22 seconds, which was correct, and there wouldn't be another horse that would have done it since I've been there. Um, I checked on Abel Friend because when I left the show, I thought Abel Friend may have because he was such an outstanding horse, got back and quickened. He broke 22 seconds 10 times in his career in races, oh. so he did do it. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful opportunity for us to reflect on how good Abel Friend was, but uh, that was a great analysis in regards to the comparison between a horse like Animo uh, that everyone's been talking about versus Golden 60 in that acceleration in the last 400 metres. Outstanding. We're going to burst out of the gates in a moment, of course. All the usual features, uh, our sweet in defeat file, Nicole Purton is going to give us all the latest there, including a quick chat to her husband with some thoughts in regards to some of his stars that have been trialling. And our very special guest is Maddie Chadwick, who is in outstanding form. Let's burst out of the game. And as we burst out of the gates, we might pivot, Shane, to Sydney, because that's where Zach Purton went. And he was dominant with two big group ones last Saturday. Road sensational, unbelievable on two horses that had slight chances but weren't favoured. And he just gave them perfect rides. And it goes to show how good a jockey he is, which we always knew he was. Um, and just rated them so well and got the got the runs at the right time to win the race, Clint. Yeah, if you ever needed, I mean, and to get home on Artorias, who'd been. A horse that you know a lot of good riders have been on board and haven't been able to get another win out of him. That uh, that really, I think, just spoke volumes about Zach's ability. And then this ride to turn communist around with some different tactics was fantastic. I mean, Shane, the only thing that might have eclipsed Zach's performance was Richo's interview with Zach later in the day. It was a great little piece <laughs> that the boys put together on Channel 7. I missed it, so I can't comment. What happened, Clint? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You go on the 7 platform, uh, Channel 7 yeah. Plus, where we're also, and, um, you know, have a look at it because, uh, in all honesty, Rich, that was a good good piece of work. Well, he, he was terrific. And what we actually spoke a little about, Shane, which um, you've uh, got some insight on and you've been uh, raising this, how long does he stay in Hong Kong? And uh, he said that within six weeks he will identify if he'll keep riding in Hong Kong. But as you keep saying, and I keep reiterating your point, um, if Nicole's happy, it's hard to leave. Um, the the thing with um, Sack is he always gives great interviews because he's honest and it's how yeah. he feels. Now, he can be riding a $2 chance and he may not like it. And if it's someone else like a Joe or someone, they'll say it's got a great chance, even though they think it can't win. Zach will tell you if he thinks it can't win and he'll give the reasons. So he's very good to interview. I don't know what he's going to do, you know, it, it all depends. But I'll tell you something now. If he goes back to Australia, he has to work 
and he's not used to the work that he's going to have to do to be successful. He's going to have to go to track work, all these meetings. He'll get away with not doing it for a while, but Australia, Australians won't put up with it. And as soon as something goes wrong, they'll say, look, he don't care. He's got too, too much money. But he's got to be happy in life, so whatever it decides, good luck to him and all the best. Yeah, the impression I got, Richo, from listening to what Zach said, I, I think if he can – almost balance this mm. stay in Hong Kong but get to ride overseas a lot more, you know, in the group ones, the feature days, I, I could see him staying there a, a fair bit longer. And I think there has been a slight shift in his commentary, but, you know, it's still a, he still it seems undecided, yeah. but I think it's hard for him to leave. But if he could have that almost best of both worlds, a bit yeah. like what we were saying with J-Mac and Jamie Carr going over yeah. there, and I think you'll just see a greater flow of these top riders um, around the world to all of their meetings, which would be fantastic for the sport. No doubt. Yeah. And, and watch this space. He said that he won't be back for Golden Slipper Day, but I'm led to believe there's a lot of pressure going on. Five Group 1s on Golden Slipper Day, there's a lot of pressure to get him to ride a couple of big live chances there. So that's okay. going to be a story that will evolve. What about Ricky Yu? He was in Australia buying horses for the future my oh, gee, he's had a wonderful yeah, Sunday. He's, he's had a great today, didn't he? And Adderfield's just a horse that's thriving at the moment. And it was nice to get this one home as our best on the weekend. And he really leveled out nicely late Adderfield. He's a talented horse. But talking of Ricky, yeah, he is – look, Shane, he's, he's bought good horses over a number of years. I think for a long, long time he was very much underrated as a trainer. But, you know, you look back at now at the horses that have been under his care and what he's achieved and – He's a, he's a top trainer, no doubt about it. Um, Clint, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, but um, I think he brought Fairy King Prawn, Electronic Unicorn, um, horses like that, and there's been plenty more. He's the best at buying horses from sales there is in Hong Kong. There's no risk about that because he keeps doing it, and not only does he do it, when they get to Hong Kong, they seem to win class fours and go on with it for a while. So he's outstanding at at picking horses, and his judgment is very, very good. Yeah, four winners on Sunday. So he's on 37 wins, only four behind John Size in the training premiership. Hey, Matty Chadwick had a day out or a night out, if you like, on Wednesday night. Yeah, big night for, for Matty. I mean, Zach was away. Wasn't a night out for Hugh. He rode, I thought, um, was probably the first meeting that I thought Hubie Bowman probably was a little bit below par. I'm not sure what. Shane was thinking, but um, look, Matt, he put a lot of these horses in great spots throughout the night. He got the 1-1 one, one on this horse and, you know, a couple of them went forward and, and were very competitive, but where he was in the zone. And I, I felt as well, Shane, like when you take like Zach or and what I've seen in a few, a couple of the big riders aren't riding at some of these meetings and a lot of the events seem quite muddling in terms of pace and tempo. You know, it seemed like it was messy a number of times during the week and just that one or two riders sometimes when they're not at a meeting, it really has a different flavour or element to a lot of the races. Matthew's ridden really well the past uh, two meetings, extremely well. I think we gave him a bit of a pay last week, was it, or the week before on um, what was it, the horse of Chris Sows. And since then he's gone to another level. He's really thinking the horse he won, I'm going to show you later, Young Victory was an outstanding ride because I gave it no hope and it really did have no hope on the way it's normal written and he gambled and changed its style and it won at big odds which was very unexpected yeah he's been singing his praises shane quite a bit yeah, lately. the one that the horse you mentioned shane was an exceptional nice but yeah um generally he's been going really well maddie so 25 wins for the season lyle hewitson ahead of him on 29 karis teton on 30 huey bowman also on 30 now uh siesta um sylvester de souza on 37 vincent ho 52 and zach Away he goes on 101, which is breathtaking. Hey, Shane, big news today in regards to a new trainer arriving in Hong Kong. Yeah, just announced in Hong Kong. Mark Newman from Sydney is going there. Quite amazing um, for him because I reckon it was only about six years ago I was with Casper at the New Zealand Caraca Sales. This is a funny story how if you work hard, and you really, really focus on what you're doing. You can be successful. And I was there and I'd brought two horses for my boys to race and they were yearlings. And Mark walked past and he was Gay's foreman. 
And I'd known him for years because I actually wrote against him and then he worked for Gay when I was writing for Gay. So I knew he was a very good judge. He worked hard and he knew a lot about racing. And I said, what are you doing? And he explained the situation with Gay and he said, I took out my trainer's licence last week. Um, I've got 12 horses now. I said, you can have two more. And uh, you can have these two Prieros, which I gave him. Casper said to me, are you kidding? Look at Mark. Because Mark is just a country boy, shorts, old top, not not looking dapper. And Casper said, who's he? And I said, he'll be a leading trainer one day. I've worked with him for years at Gaze and he knows what he's doing. So, And that wasn't long ago. So it's a big effort to get to Hong Kong. And there's no risk he'll be successful because he's got a lot of clientele already in Hong Kong. Yeah, well, the last uh, train, and uh, you, you sort of described uh, almost probably like John Size a little bit there yes. back in the day when he's arrived in how he dressed and all right. that. And our uh, last Sydney trainer to go there was, well, there hasn't been a more successful trainer in Hong Kong. So he, he sounded quite similar in some ways there, Shane. He actually is a little bit because he's very laid back and um, he, uh, uh, Mark hasn't got a bad bone in his body from the dealings I've had with him and um he, I think he's going to be very successful. Yeah, he has ridden over in in Asia, hasn't he? Did he ride in Macau and he's involved in some in Asian racing in the past? I think so. He rode for yeah. Gay in the country. He was never a real Sydney a city rider. He rode Gay's horses in the bush, but he was just a nice kid who worked hard and wanted to be successful in life. And he come from nothing. And um, Gay replaced him with, um, what's his name, Bolt or whoever it was, you know, the other partner. And it was a bit of a shock because he thought he was going to be in partnership with her. So he gambled and he went out on a, on his own and look how successful he's been in six years. It's quite amazing that he can get to Hong Kong so quickly. Yeah, it's fantastic. Adrian Bott was who you were thinking about. And uh, Adrian Bott and Gay Waters have, House have had a great association as well. So it's ended up being working out perfectly. So well done to Mark and, uh, and good luck. All right, let's get the uh, inside running with Nicole Burke. Well, Nicole uh, jetted back from Australia and she caught up with her husband, Zach, after some track work and, most importantly, some trial. He feels great, same as always. He jumped well, he cruised down there. Trialing it. And our lucky glory was a little bit slow from a barrier number six, but the rest jumped away cleanly. California Spangle straight onto the pace here with the co-partner Ambition towards the grandstand rail, far side Flaming Rabbit with Nimble Nimbus and Wellington. When he was challenged, he just did enough, so he's, um, he's going good. And then came packing Treadmill, Nimble Nimbus, and Turin mascot. It is Wellington and California Spangle. California Spangle beats Wellington. Uh, there's not too many runners. It's a small field, so it's going to be a, a real tactical race. But, you know, my bloke's got an established pattern. Um, we've got some sprinters step, stepping up in distance and some milers uh, coming back. So uh, it'll be another exciting race. I'm looking forward to it. Hutch, what did you make of California, Spangle, and also Wellington's trial? Yeah, Wellington went well, I thought. He wasn't really pressured too much, came through the line nicely. And California Spangle seems to always uh, trial pretty well. So uh, Shane, I would have thought they'd be happy with what they saw, but... Um, like I said, California Spangle is a horse that's going to go out there and do his thing. He likes to bowl along, and he certainly did that in the trial without too much pressure. And, of course, Lucky Swears is the other one who's in that race next week, and he's going to be very hard to beat. He'll just take a sit. It'll go, um, of course, California Spangle, Lucky Swears, and Wellington will get the last crack at them. be interesting to see who rides Lucky Swears and what happens with James McDonald. Yeah, what's he going to – well, James McDonald, of course, was suspended from a midweek meeting in Australia. He is appealing the severity so that he can ride on Golden Slipper Day. Um, it looks like he's delaying that. He's going to ride bloke Black Opal on Sunday, delaying uh, – and then has his appeal on Tuesday, trying to ride Slipper Day, but then obviously would like to ride Hong Kong Derby Day. As well. And the yeah. field, uh, has the field been announced, Hutch? Where are we at with the Hong Kong Derby? Yeah, well, we know the runners uh, for the Derby and an interesting weekend ahead with Attila Bagheel also competing there. And, of course, J-Mac is booked to ride Beauty Verse, who's really got to improve on what he's done. But, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a bit to, to play out with regard to James McDonald, but um, I, I, I presume he'd still be heading uh, to Hong Kong, all things being well. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But Beauty Eternal. Um, he's going to be the one would imagine short favourite, and Super Sunny Singh is going to be the the clear 
second elect, I would think, in, yeah. in the market. And Jamie Carr, Galaxy Witness for, for her. What about Ryan Moore? Who's Ryan Moore going to be riding? Ryan Moore is riding Tushal, right. with Shane, and obviously um, he has – Ryan has a lot of – I know we know you're close to him and he has a lot of faith in John Size. So, look, Tushal's going to have to improve a bit, but um, he's been happy to answer the call of John and it certainly worked in the past for him. It has, and uh, they've got a very good working relationship and John always calls on him, but um, I don't care what happens. But Beauty Eternal wins if he runs the 2,000. It's, that's not even an issue, Clint. He just wins, and he wins easy. If he runs the 2,000, I think he will. Do you think he'll run it? Yeah, I do. I, I, what barrier would you like? I would like to, I was talking to someone yesterday and I thought oh, I'd like somewhere in the middle because, you know, as we know, that 2,000 metre start at the derby, the wide draws sort of force your hand a bit. I wouldn't want to, I, I, you know, I don't think you'd want to go forward. I think they'd have to go back, back, which would be okay on the A track. And I wouldn't actually want him drawn too low, Shane, one, two or three, because then he might be smothered up and not be able to build when he needs to. So I think somewhere in the middle would be ideal. What about yourself? I want barrier one. He would just jump out, be third fence, and the race is over. Just bury it, put him to sleep straight away, third fence. I want barrier one every day of the week in that derby. Um, if you draw wide, I always remember the horse that Ryan Moore won on. Remember that of John Sizes? I think it was Ping High Star. There's been a few Ping Highs, but. There's been a few of them, and I get them mixed up because I'm so <laughs> good with names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and Joe got beat on him over a mile and he led on him. The start before the derby was in a 1,400-metre race and he won coming from last. Now, that horse could break 22 in, in a mile or 1,400 if he was held up. So Ryan worked out in the derby. If he was four or five lengths last, relax, he only had to come up in the straight and he would run over top of them because when you had a look at every horse's sectionals in that race that year, his was above and a lot better than the rest of them. So he was out the back for four or five lengths, relaxed, and come up the straight and won. That reminds me if he draws wide Beauty Eternal, what Zach could do on him. Now, Zach's not that type of rider. Zach likes to go for Forward. But that could be a nightmare if he drew out wide and he went forward in a fast run derby. He he would be found wanting. I, I mean, I've been so lucky to sit there for the last uh, couple of seasons and listen to you two talk all leading into the derby. And you were this bullish about Romantic Warrior in the past, but comments from Shane about uh, Beauty Eternal. I mean, you know, just simply can't get beaten. And we might be seeing. Uh, the coronation of a young star that we're going to follow throughout the next couple of years. Yeah, well, he's done very little. He should be undefeated and yeah. the style of his wins and, yeah. and how he's gone about his business. But I suppose, like, ultimately, like, I haven't been with Super Sunny Singh, but you cannot deny the effort, of his effort in the Classic So he's Cup. gone up to number two uh, in your rankings. Yeah, he, he was super in that race. And the interesting thing, I mean, Barry's always play a point. I remember... Um, you know, I've always felt that way, but I remember Darren Beeman stating mm. that once when he was talking in reference to the to some race where people said barriers don't matter, and he said they matter in every race, and they do. Um, but Sword Point, if he drew well in a race that I'm not sure about tempo, can go forward. He was quite brave. Yeah, Super Sunny Singh definitely deserves a lot more respect than I was willing to give him. I'm hands held up high, and uh, I got yeah. him wrong, but. Yeah, it's it's thinned right out, and the fa the short price favorite will be Beauty Eternal, and I think all things being equal, he deserves to be that the short price. So Nicole will be getting us uh, all the interviews with the leading chances and all the connections leading into next week's Derby. And while we record this show on a Friday, we've got Beauty Eautonal, Straight Aaron, Two Shell, Sweet Encounter, and Beautyverse all trialing on Friday. And uh, Nicole, we uh, checking out all that action. So. Make sure you tune in next week where Nicole will be a big part of our team. All right, let's have a look at our sweet in defeat. They're off and Sugar Sugar missed the start by four lengths. Then Dublin star, Sugar Sugar fast, Buck Smart leader. Oversubscribe, lunges at the post, missed. Sugar Sugar, that's a sweet win for Alfie Chan. You're watching the Triple Trio and our Black Booker is by the name of the Sweet in Defeat file and Hutch Buster. It's got his eyes on a few. Here. Yeah, there's been a few that have run well and uh, we want to keep the momentum going with some of our Sweet in Defeats. They've been going quite nicely. And oh, only one from the weekend. Uh, I thought that uh, haven't Nagila, this horse is definitely ready to win a race. Shane had mentioned that at, I think he's run at the Valley. They rode him wrong. I think they went back. It was a bit of a crawl. He got into a race again on the weekend where there wasn't sort of much tempo to the race either, and he actually powered really well to the line. But 
They were on a derby path with him. He hasn't quite got there, but his closing sections were excellent, mm. and he is a horse that I'll be happy to follow. And just on Sunday, before we go to Wednesday, what did you make of the Chilean horse that we were on in the last? Alacrity was yeah. good. Just once again, the wide draw, the tactics to go yeah. back. I thought he ran particularly well. He's going to win some races. Okay. Um, there's a few there that probably haven't made the derby this year that, you know, they've almost run out of time yeah. or that sort of thing. But, look, both of his runs in Hong Kong have been excellent and just if mathematically it became impossible mm. for him him to win from there. Um, E-Universe, I thought, yeah. was uh, a fantastic effort. Now, here he is. He's drawn one. I just felt, Hugh, like he jumped so well he could have pushed up there in front of Windspeeder and held that spot. And he's, he's did what he's been doing a lot lately and been happy to sort of concede ground and get go go back just here. But the horse is fighting him, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he just over-raced and, and was very keen through the early section. And that spot in front of him is the eventual winner who drew in the middle, and that's probably the spot that he should have had, and you can see him here. So you, sometimes you give away a length, you don't always get it back, particularly when it's slowly run. Is that like fair, Shane? That is that fair? Should he have been that one pair closer? I don't think I don't know about that race because he could have been closer, but the other horse was always going to come back on him. He would have followed the other horse because he had cleared him the other horse, but he could have been a bit closer. The other race that I felt he erred was down the back on the last uh, winning icy was at Clint. He lost yeah, a spot he, when he didn't need to. Um, he was just a little bit negative in a couple of races, Yui, on Wednesday night, which you can't be at Happy Valley. So it's a fine line between riding them quiet and being closer. Yeah, I, I agree with what Shane said. He probably articulated it better than I did. But, you know, as I said, um, he's only beaten a quarter yeah. blank there. Like, I, I felt like it, some of those instances, there's not enough between them at Happy Valley as well. So if you draw well, you've got to hold your spot. Mm. Sometimes you're out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, but what he's been doing here has been unbelievable through the season. Brilliant. But just in that particular instance, I felt like probably should have needed to be not even really aggressive, just hold your spot and let them do a little bit of work because ultimately the horse that beat him got there for nothing and, um, you know, he mm. then was over racing. So I felt that that just fine line sometimes. But that yeah. was, See, the other opinion. thing there, Clint, while I'm watching the race was uh, Vincent Ho on wind speed. I said, now go forward and put the other horse in the pocket. But he come back off him, which allowed him to get off the fence and out, whereas Vincent could have put him in a pocket because they weren't going that quick. And he was in two minds because if he had done it, he still could have been three wide if the other horse, the winner, had come out. Understand what I, I was saying then, Clint? Yeah, I do. I do. It was a tricky one for Vincent to decide what to do. You know, do I go forward or do I stay here? On paper, though, the other negative and just to probably – without going over it too much, didn't look like there was much speed on paper. Yeah. So the, the, the lead was sort of almost up for grabs there, but anyway, he's one to follow. And the third us. one that goes into the sweet and defeat pile is gummy, gummy. This was a really good run. This race rated well with right. me, and I didn't th – this horse, Shane, interestingly, was backed at a big price, and I couldn't understand why – Post race, I didn't really give it much of a chance. It's, um, it, it's but, trial, Clint. That's why it, it trialed yeah. sensational on the dirt. It, it led by about three under a hold, and it ran a bit of time, and it was never off the bridle. So they were going on its trial. And as I keep saying, computer teams pros back leaders, and if they draw yeah. wide, they put double on. Simple as that. They do it all the time. But in the race, we run Brave Dreams, which was nice, and he, nice. he was well-ridden and he made use of the gate, Vincent, and kept his little run going too. Beautiful run. Okay, uh, this is the segment you all love. They sweep for home now. Beander Cross has come very wide. Beander Cross answering the urgings of Shane Dyke. Mannerism coming at him. Mannerism has got it. Daring tactics by Shane Dye. He's got octagonal in full flight on the corner. Bold tactics by Shane Dye are going to pay off and he pinches the chipping Norton. Well, jockeys in Hong Kong, time to sit up, take notice. Shane Dye has cast his eye over all the rides and he's going to give a big thumbs up or a thumbs down to ones that are no good. Where do we go, Shane? There were two, but I'm going to play one later today when Matthew comes on one of his rides on Wednesday night. This is the other one, Duke Y. This was a really good ride from Jerry. Now, I'll tell you why. Out of gate one, he used him to be forward, and he's been getting back a bit, this horse, but he can race forward. And this is the first time he's gone forward for a while. There were a few things why this is a good ride. One, he's forward. Two, he comes off at the 600 instead of stays on the fence when he had an opportunity. 
three when he turns for home, he doesn't go for him, he holds him up. And four and five is when he hits him and then puts the stick away. And I'll explain. He's given him a lovely ride here and a nice run, even race. And he comes off here, which is just perfect. He's got the horse in rhythm. And you watch turning for home, he brings him into the clear, but he doesn't move on him. He's just so quiet and he doesn't want to get to the front too soon. Watch, watch. He knows he's got a couple inside of him. So he goes for him now, but when he goes for him, he really hits him. And this is what I like up here. He's strong. And and Yui's trying to come through and he's got him in such a tight gap, he doesn't move. And look how strong he is. Yui bumps him and he feels that bump and he puts the stick away and he punches him forward instead of crossing the reins. And I love that. He That was a, a 100%, a 10 out of 10, right? 100%. Everything he did was perfect on that horse. Very, very good ride, Jerry. He got the thumbs up. Who got the thumbs down? Nah, we'll give everyone a day off. I'm a happy boy this week. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's no very happy. No one's stuck out. You're in love, aren't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no you've, been, been, you've been holding hands walking along the beach or something. How well, did something you know, changed. Richo? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, on behalf of all the jockeys in Hong Kong, they say thank you, Shane, for being in such a good mood. So uh, the jockeys are off the hook. Grab your pen. We're into the classroom now. We're in the classroom, Hutch, because I want you to teach us about how important barriers are in Hong Kong. Yeah, certain starts, so they're always important, but certain starts in particular, barriers are more important than yeah. others. And we'll often we'll reference it in, in Hutchie's Hong Kong because we hear from it, Shane, and obviously everyone on the telecast or broadcast as well in Hong Kong. Here's obviously some of the raw stats with those low, uh, low barriers at, uh, at Happy Valley over the 1200, and that's with the rail and the true, but they pretty much is – in sync with yeah. when the rail goes out, if not even more prevalent to those lower draws. But you can see how difficult it can be from, from the wider draws. And I wanted to give more, rather than just stats and numbers and data, yeah. just to some visualisation because in some parts of the world, I mean, even when I came back to Australia, they said, oh, this start core field or this start at this particular course, bar wide barriers and sprint races don't matter. They matter in Hong Kong and they're yeah. very, very important. And I'll give you a good example of why, and in one race in particular. Now, in this race, you had uh, obviously Brave Dreams who drew wide. I think he was 10, and how deep is your love? Now, you can see from the wide draws, they often will be told to do this. Go back, get in for a little bit of cover um, because they're not going to get in. It's very difficult, and obviously the tactics on this night, you can see respective riders riding conservatively, and each one of these horses we backed its next start, and the market did as well. How deep is your love? Started odds on, and... Obviously, Brave Dreams um, started a, a short price favorite about three dollars. Sorry, Brave Star um, about three dollars. But um, you know, you can see them close off here now. At the meeting, off a strong tempo in this race, each one of these horses ran some of the best closing sectionals. You can see how deep is your love run into a bit of trouble there. He got gathered himself back up and rallied, rallied well. Now. At their next start, they drew low barriers. Each one of them, have a look at the difference here. Same track and trip. Our Dibby's love, a bit more driven out of the gates. But when you draw low, and there's a bit of pressure in this race here, but look where he manages to find himself, right on the back of the speed, and all of a sudden you're getting there for nothing. So he's mapped, what is it, six lengths, five lengths closer than he normally would. Obviously, like I said, the market was all over. Similar class of race, Shane, but... I just wanted to highlight to people visually, like with that start, particularly at the Happy Valley 1200 metres, when they draw wide, tactics they often go back, but you draw low, you're there for nothing, it makes the world a difference. It's the one start that is huge. And as it gets wider, it gets harder at Happy Valley on the um, C, C plus three because you haven't got as far to the first turn. So you're turning because, of course, the track's bigger when it's the CC plus three, so the rail has to be moved forward. But I always take a big notice on that that track at the at the sixteen fifty and the twelve hundred, especially at Happy Valley, Clint. Yeah, and you can see this is Brave Dreams, and this is also in reference to what I was saying about Hugh earlier on that other horse. So was something you know how he's jumped out. You can see on both those horses they've been happy to be negative early and go back at the previous start, start when they're drawn wide. Fair enough, no 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 blue there, but both riders, Vincent. 
obviously, and I think it was Karis on how deep is your love. They were positive. They weren't yeah. going to give away that spot. That's the advantage. You've got to use it. On the back of the leader, you've got to use it and you've got to hold it. And you might be, like I said, sometimes a bit out of your comfort zone. And this is also the replay with uh, Gummy, Gummy, who ran really well. But, yeah, that's just a visualisation. So hopefully if you're doing your form, you do see it. We reference it as well. Big upgrade to those horses that uh, mm. you got to check when you're looking at their form, particularly at Happy Valley. Where have they drawn last start? Where have they finished? And where will they be this time? Can they have the ability to hold the spot? And a lot of horses you think, Shane, might not be able to hold a spot. When they draw low barriers at, at Happy Valley 1200, all of a sudden they can. They can yeah, actually sure. hold that spot because, like you said, that short run. Because the others are just working too hard. It's such a huge advantage. All right, too. Let's add some star power if that is at all possible. I love that school. And I think that was a great illustration for all of our punters in regards to the importance of barriers. Uh, this young man was a champion apprentice many years ago. He's a star of the sport, Matty Chad. Well, our star guest is in red-hot form, 25 wins for the season, 434 in Hong Kong, uh, over 50 in uh, the last 12 months. He's a man in demand. His name is Matthew Chadwick. He joins us now. And, uh, Matthew, thank you so much for being part of the Triple Trio. And you join us at the right time. You must feel like you're in really good form at the moment. Yeah, it's always got a right win us. Uh, so hopefully it just keeps going. Yeah, Matt, um, little season. You've had a sort of bumpy, I suppose, 18 months with the uh, injuries, et cetera, like that. So it's been difficult for you to get some momentum. Yeah, it's been, it's been I guess, the whole career has been a bit like that. Uh, seems to have just always be getting momentum and then being hit back down to the ground. So it's just about getting up and keep going. Shane, can you remember when a young Matthew Chadwick was the champion apprentice back in 2008, 2009? Yeah. Um, I love Matthew as a jockey, as an apprentice, because horses run for him and horses don't run for every jockey. Even great jockeys can't get horses to run, I believe. But for Matthew, it was just natural. He used to get on them and the balance and they just used to flow in front and they used to keep going and he was very, very hard to pick up. So, uh, no, nah, as an apprentice, he's one of the better apprentices I've ever seen in my life. And, Matthew, what you need when you're a young rider, when that's that's a wonderful accolade from uh, Shane, you need a really good horse uh, early on in your career, and you got that with California Memory. Tell us about that. Yeah, again, that was probably by chance. Uh, me, obviously, the association with, with the boss, Tony Cruz, uh, obviously helped with me in that in, in the seat uh, for his first big win. But, um what happened there was he just had a few problems and one of the big riders wanted to ride him, I guess. And uh, he just gave me the opportunity to ride him and he just ran out of the ground that day and he, he won his first group one and that's where it started, basically. Must have a special place in your heart, though, Matthew, I know, because uh, you had a lot of success on him and he, he seemed to go so well for you know, that brilliant turn of foot. Yeah, that's what made him spe uh, special, his turn of foot. He could go... He would, it was funny because he never really travelled in a race. He was always off the bit, so it'd be going from off the bit to off the bit by doing 21s. So that was a great feeling. And uh, he, he took me through the through the grades, obviously, and uh, it was a lot of ups and downs with him. So uh, it was a big learning curve. So it's, it's, yeah, very fond memories of him. Now, I've got a race here, Matthew, which I thought was a sensational ride on um, Wednesday night, Young Victory. Whose idea was it to go back? Was it yours thinking or was it Chris So's? If that's him, gate 12 there, it's on the screen now, and he's gone straight back to last. Now, this horse here I thought had no hope. He's a leader and has only run over 1650. He stopped. So I didn't think if he went forward he would get the distance. So Matthew here has gone back, gone to the fence, and he saved ground the whole way, and it was just an outstanding ride. The horse was 60, 70 to 1, and he more or less had no chance before the win race. And the only reason he won was your ride, Matthew. So sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to give the viewers a little bit of introduction about him. So how was it through the run? Yeah, well, so prior to the race, we had a talk, Chris and I, and we, we knew from his last start that he had lost some of his speed. And I would mentioned to Chris, I didn't want to, we didn't really want to force him out and pressure him to that first turn. 
uh, and just see how and how the race panned out uh, going, coming down the back straight. Uh, as it was, he, he jumped fairly, and we so we didn't stock him up. We were given the, the run of the race because no everyone just seemed to want to stay off the fence. So I was happy once I got once I saw the backside of Vincent. My horse had tried that Helen with some start. I knew I was following the right horse, and that he would take me into the run and. It was just laugh, laughing from there. I was just hoping once he got through, he'd have enough to sprint off. Trying to done a foot. Well done, it was. It was an outstanding ride, Clint. And um, I gave you a pay, was it last week? On exceptional yeah, nice, but you've really made amends the last two meetings. I know that. That was a one-off because I said I was shocked on exceptional nice. I thought you should have been outside the leader and pressed on instead of coming back, and he wins for sure. But um, and I actually said at the time, you're riding so well, and for you to do that was a mistake, and I hope you learn from it. You know, you've got to be thinking every race, and you do, and I reckon the last 18 months, you've ridden sensational in Hong Kong really, really well. It's a credit to you, and I've been stating that on the show for a while, haven't I, Clint? Yeah, you have. You have, um, and he doesn't give compliments no. too cheaply, Matthew. Record so. that one, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you you yeah, should no, be oh, happy. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, Actually, with exception of nice that night, uh, there was prior conversation to the race as well, and that they were there was quite uh, an agreement that they wanted a bit of cover with the horse. So uh, that was the the mindset behind it. But anyway, we'll try to get the win next time. Well, Matt, listen, you're in you're in uh, you're in good form. What are we looking forward to? Well, are you looking for the next big horse to get on board? I mean, obviously you've had this interrupted campaign, but. You're really getting some some good support now. You're back in. What what have we got to look forward to? And um, is that obviously you know what are some of the targets for the rest of the season as well? Well, with the injury, just coming back and just trying to get on the better horses again, and uh, some horses with a bit of more potential has been a bit tough. And uh, we're halfway through the season when that happened, so it wasn't an ideal time because uh, I was hoping end of last season I'd be able to roll on and push on with a better season this year. Uh, so it's been yes, it's been interrupted, but um, I guess it's just about getting on, but so can sort of restarting again and just getting that baseline to push myself back up there and hopefully be a bit smooth and get on a couple of nicer horses in the bigger races. Um, Matthew, the Derby's next weekend, of course. Who do you ride? I haven't got a ride yet, so I was hoping. I'm uh, now sitting on the fence about a couple and hoping that that Ella. Critty would get a run, and I might have had a choice chance to get on that, but uh, he obviously didn't get a run. And uh, the, then the field, most of the rides had uh, riders, so it's just wait and see. Maybe something. Who sure. would you like to ride, Matthew? Uh, well, in the field, obviously, there's there's only one. There's a standout, so that's a bit of a uh, simple question. So Peter yeah. Tanner's the one to beat. Uh, sword points, obviously. A horse that ran really well was the run of the race in the, in the cup, in the, in the classic cup, the start of the four. Uh, there's a couple others that are okay. Uh, but there's, they're, they're more, I think they're more or less all about the, uh, apart from the couple that stand out, there's on, they're, they're more or less the same rating horses. They're all 80 to 100 rated, rated horses at the moment. So it's a pretty even field. And it depends a lot on how the races run, I guess. Uh, while we've got you on the show as well, Matt, looking forward to you. Eight your, rides on Saturday. rides on the weekend. You've got eight rides. I thought a couple of them look like they've got uh, decent chances. Uh, it looked like on paper, certainly, you know, um, so, you know, construction was one of your better chances potentially. He's, uh, he's obviously a horse that's not been too far away at a few recent starts. How did you think he'd run? Well, I haven't had a look at the rest properly yet. Uh, I'll do that today. So, but uh, I was on, I was on, I'm asking to ride it for a while. So, he's obviously in form. He's running well. I'd followed him, tracked him last time, and uh, it was a, it was a tough run by the horse. I thought so. Hopefully, he can finish a few, few places better. Actually, there's one that's not the worst, and you won't believe this. I just can't believe I'm saying it. It's a bad race. It's the class five. One step ahead. He went better last. He didn't go too bad. He's always there, and he could run a race from a wide gate because it's just such a bad race that, geez, there's not many in it that are going good. I haven't looked at anything because the uh, scratchings won't be final until 10 o'clock, so I don't like to do my homework too early. I like to keep it more or less fresh in my mind. 
So I like to do them after 10 and then take the, the day to do them, go through the races. So in that, in that case, if there's something gets scratched late, then you don't have to go back and look over it because it can change the dynamics of it all completely. That's very true. He's very, he, he always tries his best, the horse. Yeah. That was the name of that Star horse? of Yunlong looks a, a good sort of horse that will be reasonable price. Never wins usually, but Matty's back up in class. I thought he'd run well, so good luck on him. I won't ask you what you think because I know you haven't done the form just yet, but he's a horse that's not easy to sort of get to the front on. But it's interesting they've sort of decided to drop him back in trip go up in class with a lighter weight, that might be the sort of recipe that he needs because he didn't have too many excuses for Hugh the other day and he's a horse that doesn't need too many excuses not to win. No, he looks like a horse. He just wants to keep his rhythm going and uh, keep his stride going. So as long as he gets a smooth run race, I think he should run well. Matthew, as always, uh, great to see you and cheer you on. You're in great form. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Brilliant to have uh, Matthew Chadwick, our star power guest. Let's find some winners coming up. Saturday racing at Sharp Inn. Racing on Saturday at Chartin, not on Sunday. Punters, please take note and we'll analyse a few key races. And we start with race number seven. And uh, a simple question to you, Hutchbuster, <laughs> is who's going to win? It's actually a difficult question. Oh, yeah. no, no, I, I hope it's simple. I hope I've read it the right way. Um, well played by you. Uh, here's my uh, here's my market uh, that I think for this race, the seventh event. I've got the favourite amazing victory, a horse that's um, actually been, well, I thought he might have reached his mark, but now I'm not so sure. With the rising grade, the drop in weight, he gets on the back. I think the map's a great one for him. There's no speed in the race. Circuit Stella will go forward, beat a similar field recently. I think he's a 420 chance. Amazing victory at 320. A couple of key runners, I think, are a little difficult to price. Mr. Ascendancy, I did note with him on his last start, so uh, while his figures are good, he said the firm ground might have cost him, and I was a, thought he was a bit plain. Shane, this is Circuit Stella. He's going to go forward. He'll run another nice race like he did on this occasion, and he'll be the say, catch me if you can, and it'll just be a little bit tougher for him. But um, he's got to be a great chance in the race to go back-to-back. -back. Zach sticks on him, and uh, he looks a, a, a good chance in the race. Yeah, no doubt. This is a stronger race, of course, and he's up five pounds. Um, amazing victory ran very well there at last start. He went back on him. Um, I don't think he's got to go back from gate one tomorrow. I just don't. Not with 115 pounds. He can box seat this horse. I reckon he's yeah, going to be third, fourth fence following circuit Stella. I, I still think the top he's going to run well, Clint. He's got the 10 pounds off him. And the race the other day when he uh, ran fifth, it just wasn't run to suit him. I think Berlager won the race. And he still come home and... I think it was 22.4 or 22.3. I can't remember, something like that, and that's important for me. And with 10 pounds off his back, he's going to quicken him better this week. So I think the top is going to be hard to beat. I think Amazing Victory's got a great chance, but it's not an easy race, this Clint. There's a lot of chances. Yeah, the, the top being the golden scenery. I'm, right. I'm, I'm with you. Like, Shane, I'll, I'll be brutally honest. The reason why I thought he might be difficult for senior riders and why I priced him a bit bigger, because on weights and measures you can make a good case for him, with all due respect to Angus Chung, he's not really getting a lot delivered at the moment, the young lad, I think. Uh, and this is a kind of horse that while the weight comes off means he's a good, you know, a very good chance, all things considered. He does take a lot of riding. He's not an easy ride to, to sort of get motivated. And I'm I'm a little bit concerned where he'll be in the run in a slowly run race sort of detached. And when push comes to shove, that could be an issue. So that was why I had him a little bit bigger. No, not saying he doesn't have a great chance, but... We also have another form reference that I want to note, and if you can go to the Jockey Club website and have a look. Early in the season, Amazing Victory ran into circuit, Stella. Mm. He meets him better at the weights, and he gave him a bit of a thumping that day. And I think what Shane said is a critical point. He won't be that far back. He'll be on the back of him this time. He didn't need to be that far back. The last start they drew wide, I think 13 went back. Harris is going to be on the back of circuit, Stella here. He'll take him where he needs to go with 115 pounds on his back. Or maybe he'll uh, extend and run well. So um, what, I'm not sure. What, just going back to Angus, what do you what do you think of that? It's this horse and apprentice's ride. Um, 
No, but the ten pounds you got nine nine um, um, nine runners, which will help them. You know, so it's not a big field. The trouble you got is you got Tony and Felix don't use the stick and don't like the stick. So horses like this, horses like uh, the horse at Happy Valley the other night when it was tailed off. I think we brought it up last week. They need to be hit and picked up and got going. But Tony's do 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 do. You know how it is. Don't hit them. And I, I can't. I don't know why it worked for Tony. But every jockey is different, and because it worked for him doesn't mean it's going to work for other jockeys. And if it worked for everyone, why doesn't everyone go like this and not hit them? Because it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. We move to a race number eight. Uh, we're on at 1,400 metres here. Um, simple question, Hutch. Who wins? <laughs> yes, simple question. <laughs> and he did it with a – he said that with a deadpan face Dead as pan. well, just emotionless. Uh, well, the, well played, Matthew. Um, this is a – Gee, this is a hard race. Yeah, good luck here, punters. I mean, Smiling Collector was a Sid horse for us, Sweet and Defeat. Yeah. He's been knocking on the door for a win and he brings in a form line with a few of the others. So I'm hoping that he gets enough speed in the race and that he can get out in time and uh, and certainly win it. But gee whiz, is this one open? Um, thought there were a stack of chances. And you gave Matthew a chance, number 14, on the second page here. In Star of You and Lee. You know what I'm hoping, and I love what I heard from him. He said, I want to go, you know, that smooth run, which I think mm-hmm. is critical with this horse. I The way that I've preliminary priced this race, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to back Star of You and Long on the weekend, and this will just get down to what I play in the race will get down to what price they are, you know, various chances are, because there's about two lengths between a lot of runners in this field. This is Smiling Collector. He's ready to win. Fourth best final 200 at this meeting. When the horse is in the race, run, run, buddy, beat him. This day, though, Shane, um, the winner, the leader got a nice lead. He also got a track that suited those on speed. I think six of the eight horses that day on turf were in the first three, and the run, 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 buddy was one of them, and that was a nice performance. But I think Smiling Collector might better turn the tables there on run, run, buddy. I don't think there's a lot of chances in this, um, Clint. I think it's a strong race, but there's not too many. Wide Blue Yonder could go better from gate two if he's ridden a bit closer, and also he's got the blinkers on for the first time, and he actually looked good the other day in a trial. He went really well with the blinkers, so he can go better. Smiling Collector's flying. He's going to win a race soon, but he's not an easy ride because he can over-race and he can run off, so it's a fine line. You want to have him a little bit closer, but you don't want to do it where he's doing things wrong. If he gets the right run, he can definitely win. And Run Run Buddy's going to get a lovely run. He's going to come across, got the best barrier, 14. He'll come across and he'll sit outside of Fighting Star, who's a leader over 12, but is running 1,400, and he won't run 1,400. He'll stop for sure, I'd say. So he'll sit outside of him. And as Fighting Star, they're trying to get him to run the 1,400. Well, he's going to get a soft lead then, um, Run Run Buddy. So it's a good race. Um, you saying Bolt's racing well, Clint, but never wins? Um, but yeah. I'll go. I'll go. Well, I want to go. Smile and collector. If you know how he's, if he's going to race properly from wide blue yonder, um, run run. Buddy's got a good chance, and Star of Young's not out of it either. Okay, we move to the next race, which is race number nine, and we stay at the fourteen hundred meters class three here. Good race, an interesting race. This was a race where I didn't think that there were too many chances, but we'll get uh, Shane's thoughts in a moment or two. But great debut run in Hong Kong from a horse called Chu Chow Spirit. Now, interestingly, mm-hmm. Hugh Bowman rode this horse on debut, and he also rode a horse called Thesis for Richard Gibson. I would have thought the run from Chu Chow Spirit was a lot better than the run of Thesis last time out. Um, but, but Hugh Hugh's, doesn't. Hugh, I don't, this is the tricky part. I'm not sure if he's been booked early or what, but either way, Chu Chow Spirit is definitely one that I think you've got to entertain quite strongly. And like I said, it isn't not a strong race. One of the big chances in the race, no doubt, will be Red Line for Zach Purden. Um, John Size has sort of chopped and changed his you know, program in terms of 14, 1200. But bottom line, Shane, is this horse is racing really well. He's drawn the gate, got Zach Purton on board, and I think this is a weak race. This is a much weaker race than what he's been running in. You saw that gap back to third there. If he runs up to his recent form, he'll go close. Uh, this is not a strong race, 100%, Clint. I think with Thesis, he had very good European form. I think he won the Britannia, if I'm correct. Um, but he won a really good race in England, and he came here with a bit of a rap. Now, he's been disappointing, but his last run was actually better, Clint. He finished in 226 which is a good sectional, and he did keep coming. So he could be improving the four. Um, 
I think all Richards could come across and get a soft lead, and if he does, he could go better. Red Lion's going to be hard to beat. And the horse you said, Chu Chow Spirits, his first up run was very, very good. And if he repeats that, of course he's going to run well. He really hit the line from back that day in a strong race. Quick question for you, Shane. You mentioned his final section, Thesis, which is fair call. He did certainly did that. What do you do in a race when they all run home in, in that sort of mm-hmm. time? I mean, most of, the, most of the field, there was two lengths covering them. Oh, I, t- I take that them. in. I take that in. I know that, that they all did. But the good thing about it is they can do it. You know they can do it, right. right? So it's not as though they can't do it in another race if it runs the same. You see a lot of horses that never run 22s or whatever. It doesn't matter what, how fast or how slow the race is. They just can't do it. But when they're all together and bunched like that or whatever or one clears out and the rest are the same, you've got to evaluate. Every race is different, Clint. You know that. No, yeah. I, I do. Simple just, question. Just, just for, it's a simple question just for our... Just, just for our viewers. But hey, look, listen. In all honesty, Shane, I mean, it, do you find this quite intriguing that she sort of has decided to stick that way? I mean, do you do you let that influence your the way you do the form when you got someone like you? But I mean, on terms of how those run races rated, the Chuchow Brothers was a lot better performance. But he obviously feels like there might be something there with thesis, which you've got to sort of also take on board. I think when you're doing the form, oh, it's one of the first things I I put in my comments because I do quite a big. A lot of quite a lot of comments on every horse. Every horse that's raced for the last twelve years, I've got comments written down before the race how they'll go about them, not after the race, before them. And one of the things I always go is, "Oh, Sax picked this when he had three other chances." Um, so that's one of the things I always put in, or such and such has picked this over that, and that I actually put that in there that uh, you is riding this and not Choo Chow in my comments. We get to race number ten. Uh, Hughes riding Dragons Luck, the one, and Zach Purton on number six, Golden Express. Yeah, it's a great race, this. I think it's one of the highlights of the day, and I think this will be one of the – oh, well, a runner in this will go around reasonably short. He will with me anyway, and I'm sure he will with the market as well. And it's an horse that's created a really positive impression in Hong Kong from a handful of starts without winning in Golden Express. Uh, his recent trial was fantastic. We're going to take a look at that. But he does tackle Dragon's Luck, who's won three out of four in Hong Kong. Hugh Bowman on board. He'll be popular. Another last start winner in Speedy Mouse Thank as well. Guys. And it's an interesting race. Gee, Shane, look, you're a, when it comes to trial pervs, you're the expert. And uh, this, they don't, for John's size, they rarely trial as well as this. Luke Curry was on in the trial, but this is a great piece of work. Look good. He's stretching well. His action's perfect. And uh, he's a horse ready to win. Um, I think he's got a great chance here from the gate. He won't get back on him. Uh, here's Dragon Luck last start. He can't do any more than what he's done. I think he's won three from four. Clint, if I'm correct. Um, yep. Three he's four? been very good. Is that right? Yeah, yep. he's won three, three for four. four. Yep. So what else can you do? He's going to go forward. He may not lead because um, Super Fortune's in the race and he'll probably lead from gate five. So he's going to sit outside of him. He's got a chance, but I'm with you. I think Golden Express wins from the gate with Zach on him the way he's going. He looks good. He had excuses last run and, of course, then he was um, scratched, wasn't he? He was, but um, you know, he'd been working well leading to that. He's worked well since. Uh, I'm, I'm trusting the form. I mean, what I liked about him, he's got form around from you know his debut, which was behind Victor, the winner. Mm. But that day, they only ran about three lengths slower than three, three and a half, maybe slower than Lucky Swayness. So they already put up a he really good right. number. He goes pretty good. So yeah, this is a horse that I think will be very, very tough to beat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark him pretty short in this, and I'm hoping. And what I've noticed, you know, Hugh Bowman's got very popular. A lot of the public are happy to invest on Hugh, and rightly so. And I'm hoping with that profile of Dragon's Luck, he's short, he takes up a chunk of the market, and that we'll be able to back Golden Express. So fingers crossed. Okay, I love the sound of it. All right, let's uh, look forward to our very best for the weekend. Uh- Hutch will allow you to uh, charge into it and then Shane tends to just pick around the outside and does it uh, meticulously. I have no idea today, I'll tell you. Hey, I'm going to ask you a very simple question in a moment, who's going to win, Shane, but first (laughs) to you, Hutch. Yeah, I think it's a – look, I'll say this. Make sure you log in this weekend. I think we'll have – we'll and join up if you haven't. I think we'll have a good weekend uh, looking at the overall Have you got a bit of pep in your step? A bit of pep in the step this weekend. We've had a Mm. just a flat or slightly below par week. We're going to bounce back in style. You know what they say, form is temporary (laughs) and class is permanent. (laughs) 
I wish that was true, but hopefully it will be this Is week. Is Golden yeah. Express a bet? He's a bet. He's a bet. I mean, once again, it's all price relative, but yeah. I'm hoping, and I think we will be able to, to to get on him. I think he'll be extremely tough to beat in the last race, and he'd be one of the better bets of the day. I'm pretty sure that, you know, as at a longer price mm-hmm. in that uh, penultimate race, um, not necessarily too big a price, but with Hugh going with Thesis, I'm hoping that Chu Jiao's spirit in some way, shape, or form could be an each-way play as well because I think, to be honest, that form around um, Beauty Eternal once again will stack up pretty well and I thought his debut in Hong Kong, he couldn't have really done too much more. Amazing Victory is another one. Oh, where's that one? He's in the seventh race, the horse that we um, spoke about and I thought that uh, he could win and not sure about in terms of Quinella's there. I thought the betting could be pretty interesting but... I thought that, you know, maybe even Circuit Stella just looks like a, a sort of a single Quinella t- sort of chance in that race. But they'd be the main plays from what we covered. But I can tell you now that, like I said, yeah. I've, I've covered most of the form from the earlier races. Make sure you uh, you check it out because I'm, I'll be confident we'd have a good weekend this week. Hutchieshonkers.com. It's as simple as that. It's just a formula to deliver. RS dies, a different type of a formula, but a formula that still delivers. He's head down. Jeez, I, I, can, I can tip one and um, it'll be on top. I'm going to back it. And then, of course, I see its price and I end up backing two others to beat it. That happens with me every meeting. That was last week my bet was going to be Ching in the last. I end up backing the second horse, uh, Havana, because of the odds. So uh, I just thought Ching was too short at 260 or whatever it was. And the other horse was around $9. So I got it wrong, but, you know. I had it right, so I'm all over the place, boys. Um, Give us something um, this race week. Race two, laser victory. It should win again. Like he won well last at gate four. Probably won't lead this time. He might take a sit on him. He trialed really good the other day, Clint. He looks better that horse since he's since his first up win. Yeah, Zach used him up a little bit the other day, so I agree with you. He, he's laser gone up victory. in weight, but he'll just bounce race two the two and be hard to beat. Clint, I got to ask you. Last week I said Perfetto would win. He looked a good thing. I know it was about a dollar fifty. What do you reckon happened to him? He lost ten links last week. He was disappointing. He I mean, was no horrible. Matter, no, no matter which way you look at it. No, I mean, just, there must have been an internal issue, surely. If I don't watch replays, but I went back and watched it a couple of times trying to work it out. And I was saying, how did – like, I just had him winning. I didn't bet in the race. I stayed out of it. I didn't like it. But he lost 10 links, that horse. Well, the only thing I'd say with him, he's been in a lot of races uh, that have sort of set up nicely for him in terms of that race shape. But, yeah, he has been a bit in and out, so – Jury's out, Shane. He won't start that price next time. And race five, do we continue on with a horse that you put in the sweet in defeat file and we followed up in Flying Mojito? Do we continue on in race five? Yeah, I think he'll win again. I, he was better than the uh, – Oh, right. The, so the I, I had to actually ask you the simple question to extract that out of you. You well, didn't even mention it. You could do that or go to the website, whichever you oh, want okay. to do. Oh, <laughs> okay. Rich, are you asking a lot of simple questions today? If you want to be a host, you've got to up your game, mate, and ask intelligent questions, Okay. I just might have asked him a question that he was hoping to hold back for the subscribers. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed my last show. It's been fantastic. Uh, so that is race five, buying Mojito. Uh, got a quick bit of other oh. news as well. Um, and this is just on a slightly different note and um, something that I was talking to a trainer with regard to Hong Kong and the, obviously the Champions Mile Day, et cetera, because of the entries will close for Champions Mile Day, QE2 Cup, et cetera, yep. quite soon. Sprinter called Lofty Strike, who runs this weekend, mm. and uh, Julius Sandu spoke to him about Hong Kong and the potential to go there with a the horse, and he's going to wait and see how things play out this weekend, et cetera, but not, might not be the worst chance of potentially going. I think he's going to have a chat to Greg Carpenter, and yep. uh, he'd be a very interesting runner. Well, I he think, might have an Australian with him. Really? And I wish I win. Maybe going to the champion sprint in Hong Kong as well. Yeah, that would be something else. I think Shane, if they went over, it'd be great to see. And you know, I know we got a good one there in Lucky Swainess, etc. But um, you know, I mm. think there's a couple here in Australia, and I've been trying to push them to get over there. But if they went, they'd make their presence felt too. They're, they're top liners. There are. There's always good sprinters in Australia. Always. That's one thing Australia never lacks sprinters. And they're always going to be competitive when they go to Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. We've got always got good jockeys too, but most of them were born in New Zealand, like our Hall of Famer. <laughs> RS, uh, absolutely superb to see you. Uh, happy punting this weekend. 
Thank you. The good thing about jockeys in Australia is at present two, three, four in Sydney are all apprentices on the premiership, which is fantastic news. I've been complaining about jockeys in Australia for a long time. There's no kids to so to finally see in what, 45 years, 40 years? Actual kids on the premiership, it's fantastic. Second, third, fourth, big effort, and I hope they go on and have wonderful and successful careers. And they all tell me, uh, Jeff Lloyd's son, I haven't watched him enough, the sack, mm. there's two of them, but Zach and Sydney, they all say he's a star, he knows pace, he knows timing, and he's very good on them, so that's fantastic. Yeah, I want you to cast your eye over him. He's the one that stands out to me, and he might win a group one on Saturday because he's riding yearning, and yearning just needs – Patience and fresh air. Well, get him out wide. Yeah, get her out wide. Looking forward to that. Totally Touch Buster. Good luck for what's going to be a big day. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for watching the show. We look forward to your company next week as we build up to the great rank, the Derby.